people think, when they think of the Holy Land, the first thing they think of would be what comes on the TV, uh, the news at night, um, the turmoil, the political trouble and all of that. Um, so it's important to be a peacemaker in the midst of, of all of that. As we know today, uh, these places have a lot of hardship. However, I think if we remember truly and honestly, Christ laid his life down for us. Would we not do the same for him? For nearly 800 years, the Catholic Church has entrusted the holiest places to the Franciscans. Today, for about 300 special priests and brothers, their life's calling led them to minister, serve, work, and pray in the land made holy by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Are you one of these men? It's God who calls us to His service. It's not something that I just say, well, I think I would like to do this. When I started, I looked at just about everybody. <laughs> One thing I've already learned is that it's a little bit more like a path that you follow that sometimes has twists and turns in it. Um, and it's better to look at it that way because you're always going to learn from something from where you are. It's not worth trying to beat yourself over the head, making, you know, whether you made mistakes choosing this or that. Um, but rather that God works through all of it and leads you to where he wants you to be. I became aware of the Franciscans of the Holy Land as I was uh, living with another community. Slowly, little by little, I became drawn into uh, this possibility, this life, this spiritual journey. The Holy Land Franciscans have a special calling to bring the Franciscan way of life to the holiest sites in our church. Not only taking care of the holy sites, um, you know, the root of our religion, but also taking care of the living stones of the Holy Land, working with the poor, Arab Christians, Muslims, no matter what faith. The Holy Land Franciscan men provide presence, care, and service in the Holy Land. They minister to the Christian community there, lead parishes and schools, serve the poor and elderly with housing and food, welcome pilgrims, and preserve the shrines. The formation process starts here at the monastery in Washington, D.C. for anyone in the United States or an English-speaking country such as Canada, preparing them for this transition, both in language and culture, the knowledge that they're going to need. Oh, I go have breakfast here with a priest from Syria, a priest from Rwanda, from all over the world. I met friars from Poland and Russia, and everybody has something to teach me. There's a certain brotherhood uh, that you can feel amongst people from all around the world, different social, economical backgrounds, understandings, and everything else, but come together in one common cause. The formation process not only involves people from the United States, certainly, but from Europe, from the Middle East, from South America, places of this nature. So it, it, it's cultures coming together to form a community. And once that's done, then they enter that final phase of formation uh, for learning how to be a Franciscan. And it's usually done in Italy, in what better place? I'm just most excited in trying to find where I fit into God's plan for my life. It's a one-of-a-kind job. There's nobody else in the world that has this kind of a job. There are a lot of communities that take care of the poor, they take care of the elderly, but none of them have the responsibility of keeping these holy sites open not just for Catholics, but for all Christians. You know, you can touch it, you can see it, um, you can smell it, um, and it just, it, it helps a lot to bring the gospel alive uh, to people that experience it. So who wouldn't want to be there? I think any Christian um, of any background would want to at least visit there and, and to see that and have their faith bolstered by it. No matter what goes on around me, I know that God has something for me to do and I must do it.